hazards. They're everywhere in a really epic adventure. And I created three unique tiles that you can put on your table at your next game session. They're fun, easy to make, and I'm going to show you how to do it this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're going to create what I like to call hazard tiles. I've got three separate designs that I sketched up. The first is going to be a crocodile in this watery pit. The next is a lava pit that has these boulders that are shooting out from like fountains of lava. And then finally, we have a pit trap with some posts that your players have to try and traverse and get across. These could also be used as a trap as well if you want to try and incorporate it into your gameplay that way. I had Trigis Fantasy Art do the final design and the color work on this for me. So check him out on Instagram. And if you want to follow along in the video, just head down in the description below. You'll find a link to where you can pick these up and uh, throw a few bucks towards the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And also, leave a comment down below if you'd like to see different style of these uh, little hazard tiles. If you do that, follow me on Instagram and you have a chance to win these for free. All right, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so I was super excited to get going on this project because this project brought me back to my childhood. When I was younger, I used to like to take sheets of paper and draw these like side-scrolling little adventures for little stick men to have to go through. And they would have to descend deeper and deeper into the dungeon or towards the bottom of the paper. And each little room would have some kind of funky little trap, a spike trap, sharks, all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. We're just gonna create some hazard tiles that you can lay out on the table for your players. Now, the artwork was something that I had sketched out um, just to give Regis over at Tregis Fantasy Art over on Instagram some ideas as to what I was thinking. And he really uh, went crazy with this and the artwork is absolutely awesome. So all we're gonna do is take some press board and we're gonna add some tacky glue to it. And then once we've smeared it onto that press board, we're gonna just lay down the artwork that Tree just made. And uh, we're almost halfway there um, for the tile itself. Now what we wanna do is make sort of like an interactive part to this craft. Now for the lava tile, we're gonna have something that looks like boulders flying up from fountains of lava from this big lava pool. And one of the best ways to do that and replicate that stone is with cork. So we're gonna take a couple of corks and we're just gonna use whatever you have laying around to really rough them up. You see me use this tool in a lot of my videos. I'll put a link up above to where I talk about it a little bit more, but I absolutely love this tool for texturing all kinds of stuff from uh, foam all the way to cork and other stuff as well. Okay, so now once we got our rocks formed, you wanna make sure to leave a little section on the top flat because remember, we need to be able to place miniatures on here and have them stand upright. Once you have that on the bottom, you're gonna take this little pin vise, drill a little hole. That way we can fit these little flight pegs into the bottom. Now I don't really use flight pegs a lot when I'm working with miniatures. Very rarely do I use them, but you know, it's nice and they come in handy for obviously little things like this. So once we've picked out some flight pegs, we're going to take the pin vise and drill some holes right in the center of the uh, these shaded areas. It's gonna look like the shadow of these boulders that are getting thrown up into the air. And you wanna make sure to cut all the flight pegs at different lengths so that it adds some depth and variety uh, for the areas for the players to land on. All right, now what we wanna do is grab a Reaper miniature, this Dire Crocodile. And this one here is obviously the metal one. Uh, it's more expensive. They also make it in um, a bones material as well. So we're going to glue him together, set him aside, and while he's curing, we're going to take some foam. And we want to make some rocks that are going to go into the watery area where this crocodile is hanging out. And something you want to try and avoid is having the rock look too square, because then it's going to look kind of funky. And like the cork, you want to make all different size stones uh, for the player to have to traverse. So I'm just giving you an idea right here of how to do that and um, you'll see here in a minute what all the stones look like that I made. All 
Okay, now each stone is a one inch by one inch square, except for this one right here. It's actually a two by two. So I thought that was kind of neat to actually have, you know, one bigger stone in there as well. Now this is probably the trickiest one that we're gonna work on. What we wanna do is make the illusion of these beams or these posts that are coming up from the bottom of this pit continue at the angle that they're coming out of on the, uh, the artwork. So there's a little, I guess, secret here or a little tip to doing this. You wanna follow this part pretty carefully. Just hold the foam up onto the artwork and then mark where you know the outer edges of the post are and then somewhere off to the right you want to draw that circle then what you're going to do is grab an alpha knife and basically connect the dots and that's going to roughly keep the uh, the angle correct for the uh, the beams and obviously you just be careful and watch your fingers here when doing this because you're working at kind of a weird angle and you can see roughly how that fits there I still have some more work to do on that, but we'll bring in one here that uh, I've completed already. And again, like everything else, we want these to be all different sizes. And you don't have to follow the angle, obviously, exactly. Now for the top of these, you wanna make sure to have one area look like bark. So I'm gonna put a really defined outer ring. Come in, as you can see here, with some you know, triangular cuts. And uh, once you have that in there, then you can go and add your rings for all of the, uh, the grain of the wood. And this is just a fine tip Sharpie uh, marker that I'm using. And you can see that center one that I did um, towards the top of the screen, I really defined the uh, bark there on that one really well. Then like all of our woodwork, we're just gonna add some grain as well here. And I add a few knots in there as well. And don't be afraid to get really aggressive with the uh, grain on this, really pressing into the, uh, the wood or the foam. All that's gonna do uh, by doing that is gonna have some more highlight be able to be picked up when you start to dry brush. All right, now once we have all that done, we're gonna switch over now and grab some Mod Podge black paint mixture, and we're gonna seal all the foam, the stones, the wood. But most importantly, we actually wanna make sure to coat the cork as well. By roughing it up as I showed earlier, you're actually gonna create some little pieces, some more delicate pieces of the cork. So by coating it in the Mod Podge, it's gonna really seal the whole thing together really nice, and uh, it'll be a nice finished product once you're done. Now here are the colors from left to right that I used on the stone. I used a lot of the gray and less and less as we work our way off to the right, blotching on the tan, the yellow, the blue, and then the lighter color. All right, and then we do a little bit of black and some of this uh, sienna color here. Just dry brush, pretty light uh, for the lava rock and then these three colors for the wood. This is just a quick little example of the dry brushing technique, I guess, for the stone. You can see that looks really, really cool. The variation in color, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. Um, you don't have to, you know, make sure you dry brush every area. Doing it in certain areas, you know, really kind of adds to the realism. All right, now I had to use up some of this Nullin Oil. You can use, obviously, a homemade black wash. There really isn't a lot to wash in this uh, craft. So if you want to use non oil, you know, obviously you can. And then as you can see, I'm trying to use up this uh, Agrax Earth Shade as well. But this is again, if you're not sure what Agrax is, it's just a brown wash. Okay, now for the crocodile. I had a lot of fun. I painted this online with all my patrons on Discord. Uh, one of my tiers we can all hang out together while I'm working on the videos and uh, I really was happy with the way that crocodile turned out. It actually changed the way I was going to do something in the video down the road because of the way he came out. Now once we're done and everything's dried from all the wash, we're going to go back with just a light gray and we're going to do a dry brush over pretty much everything. 
And obviously, the more angular the thing is that you're dry brushing, the less you have to press on it because it's really going to pick up those highlights. And we want to be careful not to get too light on this lava rock. All right, now we're almost done. Now it's time to take some hot glue finally and uh, put this all together. So a little bit of hot glue in the hole for the cork, a little bit in the press board, and it's gonna be really solid. It's gonna hold it in real nice and nice and sturdy for your miniatures to, uh, to hop across on. You just wanna make sure that the top of the rock is nice and level, just like that, before the glue sets. Now, you can see the stone here. I don't have them, even though they're a little square looking, I don't have them perfectly square uh, on this tile. I angle them a little bit just so that it kind of breaks up that pattern. And then finally, we add a little hot glue to all the wood pieces and they're all set. Okay, so there's a couple of little things that I want to share with you before you go regarding these tiles. Two things, in fact. The first one, I noticed when I was doing my photos at the end that I probably should have painted the rim on these black. It would have tidied it up a little bit and maybe looked a little bit better. And also, I actually painted this crocodile and I had a lot of fun painting him on Discord with some of my patrons. And when I was done, I really didn't want to glue him down to this tile because I've got a set of sewer tiles that I would love to have this guy roam in the sewers and use him on. My original plan was to glue him down and then use some of this Vallejo water texture Mediterranean blue over him because it would have worked really nice with the tile. But, you know, it looks a little bit plain like this, but again, it allows me to reuse this crocodile. And if you're worried about him sliding around, you could add a magnet to him and have him snap into place. And you can also place this tile down without the alligator or crocodile and place him in after maybe uh, they spent too much time on that tile. Now I wanted to do a quick little, or tell you a quick little story um, about something that happened over the 4th of July. And I thought, you know, hazard tiles, this would be a good time to maybe kind of talk about this. And I actually ran it past my sister first because it involves my nephew. And um, we had a little bit of an accident over the 4th of July where my nephew was playing with one of his cousins. We were all together up at my sister's camp and uh, one of his bigger cousins, uh, he pushed him and the bigger guy didn't go anywhere and uh, my uh, smaller nephew uh, pushed himself basically backwards into the campfire. And uh, that was really, uh, uh, it really wasn't a good thing. So he pushed himself into this fire. Uh, his father luckily was standing right next to him reached for him and his uh he like slipped out of his shirt fell into the fire he pulled him out of the fire threw him into the lake and uh you know we quickly grabbed him um, i held him on the way to the hospital and he actually had to be life flighted from maine all the way to boston um to uh, have everything checked out and i like to just say you know he's a super super tough kid i know ben likes to watch some of my videos ben if you're watching I'm really proud of you. You're a very courageous kid. And um, he's doing much better now. Um, he's going to do awesome. I know he is. But I just wanted to share that story with you to, you know, kind of just let you know, you know, you know, obviously fire safety, how quick things can happen and how you really need to be on the ball around that stuff. But also maybe try and reach out to some family members or to some close friends that you haven't talked to in a while to rekindle those friendships because, when in an incident like this happens, it really makes you kind of step back and think about, um, you know, your life in general and your family and friends. So keep that in mind. Stay safe. And until next time, I'll see you around.
way. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank God. Hi.